What's up, guys? What's going on? I'm Paul. This is Pauline Theology, and I am back, and we are doing the Pauline Theology's Daily Devo with Trust in Jesus Ministries, and we are on Sodom and Gomorrah, chapter 19. We have uh, got to this scene, like I said before in some of the episodes, it's like crazy to think about some of the the um, stories that we hear when we're young, and then we're actually reading them as an adult through the scriptures to see what the scriptures have to say about them, not what our memories. Sometimes we get implanted memories, you know what I'm saying? It's because of what people have told us for so long, and we don't really know it for ourselves. And so it's awesome to be able to read through this, see it, and know it for ourselves as we study God's word. So we're on Genesis chapter 19, 1 through 11. If you haven't uh, read it yet, go ahead and stop the tape, check it out, read it, see what I say, come back, and we will discuss the four questions. If you already got it, man, let's let's dive on into the four questions, man. What do we got here? Well, it says these messengers, we are separate from the event that just happened a second ago. So the first event that we talked about in the last episode was that discussion between Abraham and the Lord. And uh, right before that, it says he sent his two messengers down in the Sodom to be able to check that out, to see what uh, is to be made of this outcry that is coming from this city. And so uh, we split the incident and we had Abraham and And um, um, the Lord speaking. And now we're on the other half. We're back at Lot and uh, we have the messengers and they head down to Sodom. It says they make it there and they hit the gates. As soon as they hit the gates, it says Lot saw him and he went and he talked to him. Now, the men, the messengers were out in the middle of the streets and they were chilling. And and Lot asked them to come to his home and they were like, nah, it's okay. We'll stay out here in the middle of the street. But Lot and uh, uh, did not want this to happen because he he was a good guy, you know what I'm saying. And and one of the things that is required of of Hebrew people is that they would be hospitable. We saw that hospitality between those messengers and Abraham, his uncle, and how he treated them. And so Lot is actually just trying to mirror the same thing and being hospitable to those people. I think what's turned the uh, messengers off to to Lot saying, no, 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 you know, kind of persistent in the way that they're doing it is because of the situation of Sodom and how evil the place is, how filthy the place is. And that even though um, Lot is trying to do something well in his hospitality towards these people, that it is almost mired or or, or set in a, in a background of filth. But he persuades them and he talk, calls them to come to his house and they're like, we'll come. And so he makes these cakes and he, he uh, gets them some drink and, and uh, they eat and they drink. And right before they're about to go to sleep, after they have having um, a fill and they're staying at his house to be able to be protected, he's placed them under his protection. It says that everybody from the entire city comes out to Lot's house and they ask for the men that had come into their place. And they said that they want to do with them as they will so that they may know them or that they may have sexual relations with these men. The whole city, the entire city. And then Lot is kind of tripping, man. He he knows that it's like a rule in that time frame that, that once you have called someone to your house um, to be hospitable, you've placed them on your protection. And so he goes out there, he's like, man, don't do this evil that uh, that you 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 have conspired in your mind to do against these men. He says, don't do it. Um, but then he does something insane. And so in one in one moment, he says, don't do this evil. But in the next, he says, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Do with them as you will. And then the men in the city are like, Dude, you, you're a foreigner. How can you be a judge over us? Tell us how to act in our own city. He says, we're not taking those people. That's bogus. And then he uh, continues on and he says, or the, the, uh, the, the men say, we're going to do to you worse than what we were going to do to those men. And in that moment, the, uh, the angels snatched up Lot, put him back in the house, shut the door, And then set those dudes with a blindness, struck them with a blindness. So this is a crazy story. The hospitality that's being shown is supposed to convey Lot as being a righteous person. But at the same time, the way in which he tries to um, protect the men of his home above all costs with the 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 his children 
and makes him to seem as despicable as the people in the city of Sodom. And so it's a, it's a it's a weird amalgamation of things that are happening in this story that depict Lot, especially different from Abram, but Abraham, but also the city. So what does this say about God in this particular story? Well, God's not going to tolerate sin. That's why he sent those messengers down there. It's not because he didn't know what was happening, but it was because of the outcry that was coming up that he could he could see and hear and, and smell all of the things that was going on in that place. So destruction had to come. Sin is not tolerated. But also that God is just. The reason that these things are happening is because of the justice of God, that he is going to do what is supposed to be done. What does this say about man? Well, I think it says that hospitality is important. Um, the reader and the writer, the writer uh, would understand that this hospitality that Lot's showing is a wonderful thing, a good thing. So much so that he risked everything that he had uh, for these men, for the protection. But at what cost is that priority? Or what priority is he supposed to have? And at what cost is that protection supposed to be? That's the problem with Lot and his man, that sin around him has been so prevalent that it's starting to corrupt even his good morals. How should we apply these truths to our lives, man? Well, I, I believe that as we recognize that God doesn't tolerate sin, we shouldn't tolerate sin. And so I think the thing that we should remember is even when thinking we're doing good, that we should still reject sin. And what I'm saying is, is of Lot's children, of his daughters, that he would do what it was um, that would put his daughters in such a stressful situation, in a, in a predicament, which it'll come back on him in a little bit as we read that he's the one that's going to be violated as he sought to have his daughters violated for the protection of others. So this is a very difficult um, um, story. And if you have any questions, man, put some in the comments. Um, I decided to slip through it real quick, but I did want to remind us of the fact that it is the a hospitality of what God has called us to as brothers and sisters in Christ to care for others. And that sin is not tolerated uh, despite where it comes from or who it comes from and that God would deal with it uh, even eventually. And one thing is that this um, um, uh, this destruction, like why a whole city is being destroyed. Well, it's a picture of the destruction that is to come because sin is to be utterly annihilated. Sin is to be utterly annihilated. But oh, for grace of God. And we're going to see that here in a little bit as we continue to study this second part of Sodom and Gomorrah. I appreciate you guys for listening, and I will see you in the next episode.